System administrators sometimes need to verify that the passwords on their system are decent. So we're going to look at using John the River to crack passwords on Linux machines. First of all, I have a machine. It's logged in. You can see that we have a, we're on the John the River site. And down here at the bottom, there is this uh, John the River Jumbo Community Enhanced enhanced version. So you want to use the community enhanced jumbo version. You download the tar.exe file and that drops into my downloads directory. Take a look at my downloads directory. You can see we have this file. I can do tar xvf and I don't need to tell it the encryption. It just figures it out or the compression figures it out and I decompress the file. And now when you get here, when you get done with that, you have this directory that's been created. You can go into the directory and you will see there's a lot of stuff in here. It's not always easy to figure out how to use John the Ripper. So let's just go ahead and figure it out. So first you want to go into the source directory. Now, one thing that's required for John the Ripper to run is you need to have your compiler and you need to make sure you have the open SSL development, development libraries. If I look in this directory, you can see there's a bunch of source code, a bunch of .c and .h files. You can see .c, .h. .c indicates that it is usually a C language file. .h is headers that go with those. Um, we can assume that we're going to need to have, well, the C compiler at least. So I do a yum install gcc. And I'll do a GCC minus C plus plus just in case. And then do open SSL and open SSL dash develop. Although I could probably just do open SSL develop to get open SSL as well. And then I go ahead and I install the packages. Now all of them are already installed, so that makes it quicker for me. The next thing I need to do is run the configure command. Configure will build me some make files. So let's run that. It goes through and it will also indicate to me or tell me if I mess up and I'm missing any libraries. If it tells you you're missing libraries, go ahead and install them and get them on your system. So this should go through fairly quickly. Normally it does take a little bit of time to do the configure, but not as long as it takes to actually compile the, the code. That takes a little bit longer. So John the Ripper what it will do is it will try using the passwords that are in your password file and using all the algorithms it knows or the algorithms that are indicated by the password salts, um, the encrypted forms, and try to figure out what's there. And it'll use different salts to try to check it out based on what's in the file. Let's take a look first at what's in this shadow file. Let's see. You see, shadow is where my passwords are actually stored. You can see down at the bottom, um, lots of users and their passwords are encrypted with a fairly strong encryption. So we'll go ahead and now we will build the package here. So you'll make clean first to make sure that any leftover compiled stuff is gone. Now you'll make minus s and it will sit there and compile. And it takes, this will take a while. So we'll just go ahead and skip ahead. All right, so that took about three minutes to build all these things, maybe three or four minutes. Now I have all my code made. So I can move out of this directory back to this main directory. Take a look around. I can see that there is a file called doc, which has a bunch of instructions for how to make things I have, or how to run things. And I have this run directory, which has my code I want. So I go into run and take a look around. And I can see there are a bunch of programs here. So I'm going to run John the Ripper directly against my password file. So I do period slash John. And my password file is etc shadow file. So I run that. And Instantly, it discovers that the Alice user, her password is Alice. Now, that's not a very good password, but it has discovered it, and so now we know that 
Palace is not using a good secure password. So as an administrator, what you would normally do is when you discover that Alice's password has been picked up, figured out by John the Ripper, you would lock the account or you would set the um, set the password to expire so the next time she logged in she had to change her password. And then you would somehow inform her that her, pa her account had a bad password and it needed to be changed. So let's go ahead and wait for a few minutes and see what else John the Ripper discovers. Just discovered that Bob's password is change me. Not a ring password. Assuming an administrator just changed it. All right. Sweet. Okay, I let John the Ripper run for a few minutes and it doesn't seem to have found anything other than Alice and Bob's password. So that's a good sign that most of their passwords are fairly secure. Although I do know that some of the ones that it has not found are not secure. You could let it run for a day or two. Um, usually, uh, if you ever let it run for a week and it doesn't crack stuff, that's a good sign that the passwords are decent. Um, anyway, but one thing you have to keep in mind is that in order for you to be able to see the password, the etc shadow file, you have to be logged in as root. Or you have to find some way to get some privilege escalation. Either way, this is how you can run John the Ripper and crack passwords or verify that they're secure.